And the Cat Williams video comes out. Currently, right now, it's at about 39 million views. He made a lot of money just from having Cat Williams come on his podcast. Let's talk about like, why did it work? Yeah. Right? Why did that thing go off? Well, what's going on y'all? Peace and love. We are the Rich From Anywhere squad and we are coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here actually at a networking event, getting our network on. Um, but we still got to bring you Mel's Full of Marketing. This is actually episode number two. And today's crazy because there was something that happened last week, bro, that literally took the internet by <laughs> storm, bro. Literally. And uh, it, it was actually the Cat Williams interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. Yeah, man. Comment below if you checked out the webinar. Uh, not the webinar. Check. Comment below if you checked out the video. Um, it was wild. I watched the whole thing. Um, I'm a Cat Williams fan. Shout out to Cat Williams. It was like a two and a half hour podcast. It was long, bro. It was long. Um, but I think there's a lot. Of, again, we like to bring our perspective to to Mouthful of Marketing, right? Because we like to look at things from a producer standpoint. A lot of people just watch as a consumer. But I want to challenge you guys to start looking at everything from a producer's standpoint. Meaning, don't just watch the podcast and like get hypnotized by what they're saying watch what they're doing why did it work right so i noticed that i was on uh shannon sharp's youtube channel and i happened to go to his videos and i saw that his most popular video was like six million views and that was a video that was like 11 months old 11 months old almost six million views so basically his youtube channel like was capping out at six million views and it stayed like that the entire year for like a year right and then the cat williams uh, video comes out and it's at like currently right now it's at about 39 million views and like what is it now for like a week yeah bro like so, he definitely gave shannon a gem because you get for those of y'all that that are new to youtube just know that you get paid youtube pays you to have advertisers advertise on your video yeah so 39 million views i don't know what that equates to in his particular niche of entertainment but he made a lot of money just from having cat williams come on his his podcast. Yep, yep. So and, let's, let's talk about like why did it work? Yeah. Right. Why why did that thing go off? Well, we never really know why something goes viral. And, and anybody who's been in this game for a while knows that sometimes things just pop off. You know, like people get lucky. But I think it had a lot to do with. Again, if you guys seen the episode, then you know what I'm talking about. Cat Williams was going in, bruh. <laughs> like, Cat. Cat was holding no punches. Cat was coming at everybody with the machine gun, just like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like every, every, everybody was getting it, yeah. right? And a lot of comedians, he was just putting everybody on blast, right? And what that means from a marketing standpoint to me, that is one word, that's controversy, right? Cat Williams brought that controversy to that platform. And again, I don't watch a whole lot of Shannon Sharp's, uh, you know, Club Shay Shay videos. So I don't know. Is there a lot of controversy on that on that show? Typically, no. There's okay. there's really not much controversy on his show. He keeps it. Well, here's the thing. Shannon makes it a safe space for anyone to come on. He doesn't really give you too much pushback when you have certain opinions and thoughts. So Cat Williams thought it was the perfect place for him to go and actually share his truth um, on how he felt. And mm -hmm. if you notice, if you watch the interview, bro, like Shannon didn't push back and say no, 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 that's not true. That's or true. Shannon just let him you know, do his thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important um, for Shannon. I think Shannon's very smart and he didn't push back because he understood that what Cat Williams was giving him was ratings gold, oh, yeah. you know? Um, <laughs> and, and and that's one thing that, that, that was kind of, that was kind of like a masterclass on marketing, bro, because a lot of times as we, we, we push our brand forward, we have certain opinions, we have strong opinions about things, but we never push it out there to the forefront because we're, we're afraid of what somebody might think, right? Mm -hmm. And as, as a consequence of that, your content stays kind of in this, in this median of like, you know, 500 views or a thousand, whatever your median is, it stays there. You never see any spikes, right? right? But when you start to come with, with an opinion it changes things because a lot of times we 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 still we tote on the fence like we we stay on that that line that vanilla. fine line yep very vanilla that vanilla line <laughs> trying to please everybody yeah right? and then yeah. that's the thing like yo if you're trying to please everybody you're gonna please nobody facts so there's no point in, in being vanilla and trying to please everybody that that first of all it ain't gonna work yep 
And second of all, it's going to keep you broke. It's going to keep you low, right? And that's something, by the way, we're also learning how to do that too. Like we're, we're understanding that, yo, we have opinions about stuff, right? That was a mistake that we made earlier in our career. Um, and still to this day, sometimes mm -hmm. like we, you know, we want to, we don't want to say things that are too crazy, but at the same time, it's like, yo, like I got opinions, I got hard opinions about stuff. And now we're getting to a point where you're going to see a lot of this in 2024 from us is like giving y'all our raw opinion, whether you like mm -hmm. it or not. Um, and because that's what people want. Yeah, man. People want the real. Absolutely. Like in 2024, man, we got we live in a world of filters and captions and and all this fake stuff going on. It's like in cap cut, bro. You can literally go inside and whiten your teeth in the video. It's crazy, bro. Like crazy. You you got all these filters and stuff. And like you meet someone in real life and you're like, yo, you look nothing. Nothing like, like I that. Like who so, are you? So like I think the world is craving real. You know what I mean? And that's a good thing for us human beings who are just real and we're, we have flaws, we have opinions, and maybe not, maybe we're not politically correct all the time. Maybe we're completely wrong, but that's okay, mm -hmm. right? That's what it means to have freedom of speech and be a human being, like have dialogue. So, and you know what it is, bro? You know what's, what's good about really having an opinion and really being able to just put yourself out there as the authentic you? You'll find that the love that you get from people that rock with your opinion is stronger than if you would have just toted the line and, and mm -hmm. been vanilla with it. The That's love nice. is a lot stronger because there's people that share your same opinion and are very passionate about that opinion. So they have very That's strong nice. feelings towards you. On the flip side though, there's gonna be people that have strong feelings on the negative side of you, but what I always like to say is the love outweighs the hate, mm -hmm. always. So don't worry about the people that aren't on, on your side on a particular opinion. Embrace the love. And if you notice something, man, any big, any big personality out there that, that's like really big, most of them focus on giving their raw, authentic opinion. That's what, that's what makes, for instance, Shannon Sharp, okay? Shannon Sharp, ex-athlete, he always had an opinion. I don't know how many of y'all watched him play football, but he was the trash talker. He was always giving his opinion, mm -hmm. and that's what made him loved. If you, if you watch him on, on first take on ESPN, it's the same thing. The thing that makes these, these analysts and these people popular is because they have an opinion and they have a very strong opinion that some people hate, some people love it, but ultimately what that does is that gets them more attention to, to push their brand. Like keep in mind, Stephen A. Smith is the top paid uh, sports broadcaster mm -hmm. in the game he makes like nine million dollars a year and Stephen a has strong opinions he's talking trash yeah yeah, yeah. Talking hard trash so again when you're watching mouthful of marketing or any type of content like this always have in the back of your mind how can this relate to me right that's that's the, the main question you should always be asking how can this help my business right how what can I take from this lesson and use it right so again controversy made this video on Shannon Sharps, on Club Shay Shay's video on, on their YouTube channel go crazy, right? The biggest thing. So it's like, okay, if controversy works there, by the way, it works in any industry. Yes. How can I take controversy in my industry and apply it and use it to my advantage, right? Are there certain things that are like taboo to say in your industry, right? Um, or, or about your, your clients or about things that they go through. Like what are those taboo things or those controversial topics that people don't want to talk about and lean into it, mm -hmm. right? Lean into it and use it as a hook to pull people in. And, um, and I can almost guarantee you, your views are going to go up. Yeah. Your awareness is going to go up. And there's this one tactic called the reverse psychology tactic that you guys could use if you want to. Here's a quick little gem for you. Is what you do is you start with a controversial topic that people will naturally find like oh like negative or something like that. And mm -hmm. again, by the way, the world is attracted to negativity. That's why the news is the news, yep. right? And if you notice like the news, they only talk about negative stuff because that's what attracts people, mm -hmm. right? If they talked about all the positivity being spread in the world, mm -hmm. like no one would watch the news. Mm -hmm. So again, pay attention, right? Because success leaves clues. Um, but don't watch the news because it's trash. Absolutely. <laughs> but like, uh, there's still a, a, a lesson to be learned there. But Anyway, what you can do is you can use negative stuff and use controversial topics to hook people in, and then you can 
find a unique positive twist to, to actually twist it inside of your content yep. and, and actually leverage it in a way that's positive at the end. So what you're doing is you're using negativity mm -hmm. to pull people in and then give a unique positive twist. I, I like you know that, man. I, I like that. And I think for you all, I think the next question y'all are going to ask us is like, OK, like what are some controversial topics or how do I go about finding those controversial topics that are going to get me seen, you know? Mm. And a great thing to do is check out Twitter. Twitter is the number one news source in the world um, as far as the ability for them to be on the minute with things. So as soon as something happens, the first place you go is Twitter because you're, you're gonna get on the minute information, on the minute information about what's trending, mm -hmm. on the minute information about who said what. And that's where you gotta keep your ear to the streets because once you get a controversial, t like for instance, we're doing this video right now on Cat Williams, why? Because we know it's a controversial topic and we got some things to say about it. Mm -hmm. People are still searching for this video, so when we drop this YouTube video um, from the podcast, people are gonna check this out to get our opinion because this is what people are searching for, exactly. right? So we literally did the same thing that you need to be doing in your business now. Find these controversial topics and add your spin to it. We're adding the marketing spin to it because everything out here is marketing. Cat, Cat Williams is a master marketer. He's able to understand how to get people to respond to him. Now, obviously, there's things he said on the podcast that people are debating and, and they're saying he's lying about. But Cat Williams is a master at that. He's a master at marketing because he knew if he went on Shannon's podcast and he just said a few polarizing things and didn't hold back that it was going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. But I want you to notice another tactic that Shannon did on his channel. Right. He had the two hour and 30 minute video. It was about two hours and 30 minutes or so. And what he what he understands is that most people aren't going to watch that whole podcast. So what he did, what he had his team do was clip up every controversial segment that Cat Williams was involved in. And he released the little micro segments on his YouTube as well. Little 10, 15 minute segments. He must have released at least 10 of them. Mm. And each one of those is going viral as well because yeah. they're the smaller clips. So now what he did was he essentially made money twice. He made money on the initial podcast because it has 39 million views. But once he started releasing these micro clips, these micro, a couple of these micro clips have a million views plus. That's the way that you double up on the money right there, 100%. right? Yeah. And it's all around. It's all around, bro. Like, yo, yo, you can use this this topic for any industry. Though. Yes. Yes. Like any industry can do this. And I think that even if you're selling physical products, like start thinking about controversial topics inside of your inside of your industry about your product that you sell. Literally, set up a camera and just start talking. Right. Just start going off on on this topic. And you don't have to, like, try to create some 60 second reel. Like, nope. just talk for like 15, 20 minutes about your industry. And then later on, now you have this macro, what we call macro content. And you can go in, have a VA or you can do it if you're still in the beginning and, and go in and just find those clips and, and take micro clips. And um, and I, honestly, a lot of times it works better when you, when you do it that way, because if you're trying to create some 60 second reel, and it's like, okay, go. Mm -hmm. now, most people, like, they don't know how to talk yeah, in front of the camera. Yeah, like, yeah. they turn into a completely different person. Right? Absolutely. Literally, I had a, a session with my student, uh, like, two or three days ago. And she literally was saying the same exact thing. She was like, man, when I'm coaching people in front of people, like, live, I'm, like, a completely different mm -hmm. person. And when I turn the camera on, I just sound different. And people are just like, I'm trying to be this perfect version freeze of, up. like, yep. and they freeze up. And it's like... And then they get frustrated and they're like, I'm not myself on camera or, or, or I, no, they say, I, I don't work good on camera. Like I don't, I don't translate on camera. I got to be someone I'm not, but it's actually the opposite. It's like, actually, no, you just need to be the person exactly, who you are. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Um, man. So, you know, one hack to doing that is just create a long video because once you start getting into the flow, seven, eight minutes in, you're just blabbering. You're just yep. talking and you're yourself. Right. So get the, uh, get all the kinks out. And another hack that you can use if you want to like really get your true personality out is record your stuff in front of a live audience. Yeah. Right. Like have and I don't care if you're just getting started, like have your son, daughter, wife, husband just sit in front of the camera with you. Like do it in front of an actual live person. And I guarantee you it will bring out like another energy. That's 100%. why a lot of the content that we shoot is in front of a live audience. Yep. Like, we'll do it in front of people or, or on a webinar or in front of our coaching uh, when we're doing coaching stuff and yep. in front of our students, so yeah, thanks, man, for sure. And that, those are those are good gems here. And you know what I'm wondering, bro? I'm wondering what Cat Williams is selling. 
you know like does he, he have a does he have end. a tour coming out or or something like that because well he said that he wasn't selling anything but then at the end i remember him talking about something i think he had some kind of a show or something yeah kind of something yeah happening. yeah yeah because that's another thing like cat williams is very smart actually he's his IQ is like up there with like really really smart I people. I didn't know that before the podcast. Yeah. I didn't know how smart he actually was. He's That's smart, crazy. and you can tell he he speaks well too. He's a he's a mm-hmm. good speaker. Um, but Cat's very smart. So now that you say that, that makes total sense. He came on the podcast, knew that he was going to give everybody hell, and he did. Mm-hmm. Knew that things were going to go viral, but then at the end, he he pitched something, which is important because here's the deal: a lot of people will create content that goes viral but they don't have any type of call to action at the end of their video. So all of those views, all of those likes and shares and all of that stuff, it means nothing because you weren't able to monetize it. Mm. So, you know, it's very important to have a call to action of some sort at the end of your video to capitalize on all of that traction, um, you know, that, that you're getting. And when Kat went on there and I saw all the viral videos, bro, like, I'm like, yo, when is Kat coming to Florida? Because I'm trying to check him Facts, out. Bro. I'm, t- I'm trying to check out his stand-up, yeah, for real, yeah. you know? And you should, like, always think about content as a way for you to get people into your world, right? Don't, don't be one of those dummies who create content just to get a bunch of likes and views yeah. and to please their ego and their vanity, right? Your vanity ain't making you no money. None. All those likes, those comments ain't paying none of your bills. So don't worry about that stuff. We have a principle called the LOL principle. No, not the laugh out loud principle. It's called the list over likes principle, meaning amateurs create content just to get, just to grow their likes. And professionals grow, I'm sorry, professionals create content to grow their list, right? So always having that mindset of like, listen, I need to create this content, but I always need to be driving them somewhere. I always need to be either, either getting people on my list, have some kind of call to action, sell them something don't don't mm-hmm. sell them something all the time but start getting people off off of social media and onto your list is something that we teach a lot because again you know youtube is great but you don't own youtube no nope. so if youtube shuts you down for some reason all your subscribers are gone overnight and now you have no business you mm-hmm. can't reach your customers same thing with instagram TikTok, yep. facebook same and, thing you know and there's a lot of there's a lot of entertainers out here that are doing like really well as far as like getting the eyeballs but you know a lot of them struggle with that part right there with like the monetization part like imagine if we got our hands on on cat williams if we were part of his marketing team we would be creating cat williams merch you know what i'm saying we would definitely get him on tour if he's not already going on tour Mm -hmm. we would do everything possible for him to monetize that funnels upsells everything bro he's already making bread i mean he doesn't need it yeah it's just an extra stream we go crazy we go crazy with it man but like this is the thing like i want y'all to start looking at These people who think about the person in the media that you hate, that you absolutely despise. Just think about who that person is. But now, instead of looking at it from the lens of a consumer, look at it from the lens of a producer and think about what it is they're doing to make you hate them. They have very strong opinions Mm. that you don't rock with. Right. But because of that, their name is in your mouth. So regardless of the fact that you hate them, if you're typing on Facebook, oh, I hate Donald Trump or, oh, I hate so-and-so, that's marketing for them. Yeah, it is. And then on the flip side, the people that absolutely love them, they're typing, oh, I love, I love him or I love him. Jake Paul, for instance. Jake Paul is one of my favorite marketers because if you go to his Instagram page, the things that he does will either piss you off or they'll make you really, really happy. He pokes and prods and says these polarizing things that people hate. People love to hate and people want to see him get knocked out. Mm -hmm. But then on the other end, there's people that absolutely love him, love him. And he's very bold. He predicts that he's going to win. He talks trash about people that he has no business talking trash about. But it's all polarizing. And if you look, he has a multi-million dollar brand. He's a very smart marketer. And you have to start using these things to your advantage. Conor McGregor does the same thing. Exactly. Same thing. Super cocky. Got all types of brands making just millions and millions of dollars yep. off of his personal brand, right? You guys need to be building a personal brand. That's what we're focused on in 2024. Yep. Um, and it works, man. You know, I even tested it because, again, this, it's not like we don't have strong opinions. We both do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just haven't really been putting it out there like that because of multiple reasons. But, you know, 2024 is the year. It's different. And I try. I, I even did it this a um, couple weeks ago because... And I, and I basically, I led it like this. I said, listen, I don't care if my son graduates high school. 
And it's like... It's like, wait, what? Yo, wait, what? Like, everyone's like, what do you, what do you mean you don't sit, care if your son graduates? That's crazy. And then I led into, like, listen, well, the school system just... Tr- they don't teach anything valuable whatsoever, right? All the, all the extra stuff that, like, yo, all you <clears> need <throat> to be successful is, like, fifth grade math, fifth grade English, and, that, and that's pretty much it. All this other stuff is completely pointless. They don't teach you about taxes. They don't teach you how to make money, grow money, save money. They don't teach you how to buy a house. Nope. They don't teach you how to be persuasive. No life skills, bro. No life skills at all. Yep. And the reason why they do that is because they, nece- they don't necessarily want you to be successful. They want you to be a worker bee bagging groceries at Target. Yep. Right? Going out and getting shopping carts. Yeah. That's what they want for you. They want you to be a customer service representative in a box in a cubicle. And and, and if that's the case, then you know, their job is their job is done. Yeah. Right? Um, so no, I don't care if my son graduates high school. I, I honestly don't. Now I will say this if he's not gonna graduate high school, he better be doing something. That's a fact. You know bro. what I mean? He better be like building a business out here in the trenches making some money or at least uh, attempting to make some money and mm-hmm. you're definitely not going to be sitting at the house doing nothing well well that's the you thing man I, mean? I feel like after the ninth grade there's no reason for you to go back to school mm-hmm. at all yeah. after the ninth grade because if you think about it like in our day-to-day lives like what am i using that i learned from the 10th grade on that is helping our business grow bro i ain't use trigonometry and i don't no. know long, algebra like no <laughs> none of that right yeah so, so after ninth grade, it's like you're learning all these things. Now, if you're a doc, doctor or someone that's saving lives yeah. like that, go to school. Please do because we want, you, we want the best doctors out here, 100%, mm-hmm. and kudos to y'all. But for everybody else, like ninth, you can stop at ninth grade, mm-hmm. learn digital market, learn the, the, the stuff that we know, and you can make a lot of money yeah. with that. You know what I'm saying? Learn a trade, learn HVAC, learn, learn something that's yeah. going to be beneficial to society and you're going to make the money. That's the thing, like trades. Yeah. Trades need to come back. They're not teaching this stuff anymore. Absolutely. You know, not as much, at least, right? Well, you and know what they're doing in Florida now, bro, is I heard uh, DeSantis just signed a bill. This was like last year. Mm-hmm. That's requiring um, a finance class to be put into high schools mm-hmm. now. Okay. All right. I love that move. I do, too. I love that move, I do, man. too, because the thing is, I do, I, I kind of understand why they put calculus and trigonometry and all this stuff it's it's really in my opinion it's to filter out the people who do need to start learning that stuff right because 80 percent of the world's going to go through that and be like i don't need to do i don't want to be an engineer right but then there's going to be that 20 percent who like oh i like this right and they're going to be the ones that go off and be astrophysicists yep. and all that kind and of stuff. and do that and that's great yep. but at the same time why don't we have a class on taxes why don't like even if you're still gonna teach all that stuff? Yeah. Why don't we have a class on how to how to make money, how to save money, right? How to buy your first house, on marketing, yeah, on sales, on being persuasive. Like marketing is big, bro. And you know what I want to do? And we talked about this last year. I want to um, talk to the school board about creating some sort of curriculum or one-off training where we can actually come into the schools cool. and you know educate these kids that'd on cool, on marketing. Teach them ads. Imagine learning ads. As a 15-year-old. Bruh, come on. Dude. I'd bro. Be, like, I'd be president right now. Yeah, if yeah. If I learned ads and marketing when I was in my teens, bro, I'd be a whole different world. Game over. <laughs> It'd be a game, whole different world. Game over. And These the, young kids, by man. By the way, I'm, I'm talking about my son's situation, and he's in private school. Yeah. Like, that's private school, right? We pay a lot of money for that, and they're still not teaching that crap. Actually, the one, that, the one thing that triggered me most, bro, is one day we were sitting down, we were eating dinner, Mm-hmm. And uh, and my son Jalen, he come, he tells me he's like, hey dad, like, um, they taught a business class today in school. Okay. And I was like, yo, that's crazy, that's awesome. Like, so uh, who's the teacher? Like, what are they teaching? And she, it, was, it was like, yeah. So the teacher came in and was like, the first thing she said was like, yeah. So guys, I'm teaching business. I've never had a business. <laughs> I, I don't really know much about business, but I'm gonna teach you some business. Yo, that's ridiculous. Bro. And I'm just like, okay, I guess it's a step in the right direction, but like. You know, you're out, you got people out here teaching stuff that they've never even done. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a private school. So imagine what they're doing in public school. It's got to be and worse. that's what we did. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the majority of people watching went to public school as well. They know how trash it is. You know? yeah. So anyway, I use that because that's really happening in our real life for real. And it's affecting our life for real. Mm-hmm. Um, so I talked about it. You know? And as soon as I posted it, comments, boom, 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 boom. Yep. It's like. So trust me, guys. It works. Use controversy in your in your content. 
if you Absolutely. want to start getting more traction. And, and think about it too, the controversy is the hook that keeps people in. And remember the key to going viral, for those of y'all that have been on like some trainings that we've done and things like that, one of the keys to virality is keeping them on the video for at least three seconds. That's one of the keys. If you can keep a consumer consumed mm -hmm. for three seconds or more on your video, that signals to Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or YouTube, wherever you're at, that signals to them that this particular piece of content is good and the users that are on this platform like this content. So I need to go ahead and spread this content to more people on the platform so I can keep them on the platform as well. 100%. And that's, that's the key to going viral. So yeah. what we're giving you is tools that you can use to go viral. Cat Williams did it. Same thing, right? YouTube recognized, oh, this video, a lot of people are, are watching this video and they're, they're, they're not clicking off of it after 30 seconds. They're watching this video. So YouTube wants to keep people on the platform too. So organically, YouTube starts sending it to other people. On top of that, people get triggered by it. So they start sharing the video with other people. And then it's just a big old like viral and it's wild. When explosion. Some, when something goes viral, anybody who's had anything go viral knows it's wild. Yep. It's wild watching it, right? You're like, you're getting thousands of views every mm -hmm. single minute and comments are just flooding in. And, and we've had a couple of videos go viral. We have students that have videos go viral. Yep. Um, and it's wild, man. So, so try this stuff. Um, and one thing I think that I, I want to, you know, we can end off with something like this. Yeah. We can say, um, basically, if you want to be able to take advantage of these controversial moments, these trending moments, it's all about speed. Right? Oh, yeah. You got to oh, yeah. do it fast. Right. Like Cat Williams video just came out like six or seven days ago at the time of this recording. And we're, you know, we've been traveling, so we should have did it earlier. Honestly, yeah. But still, timing is everything. So but if you want to pick up on the trends and do stuff in, in an orderly and a timely fashion, it's all about making it convenient for yourself to record, right? You have to make it convenient for yourself. Meaning, if it's super difficult for you to set up your camera and your lighting and all this situation, then fa like, fact of the matter is you're probably never gonna wanna shoot, shoot content. Absolutely. Because it's so difficult, it takes you 45 minutes just to get your stuff set up. So what I would recommend to everybody on here, this is just what we do, is we systemize our content creation station basically, right? Like I have my lights already where I want them. I have my camera exactly where I want it. I know exactly what cord I need to plug in and I've systemized the whole entire situation. So now when an idea comes to mind, it's like, okay, boom, 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 boom quick record. I don't know. I'm talking right. And within, I'd say realistically within 30 to 45 seconds, I'm, I'm on camera talking, right? Yeah. It doesn't take me 25 minutes to set my stuff up. Right. So, mm -hmm. Um, whatever that system is for you, you know, figure out what it is. That way you can optimize that. Well, you know? you know, and we've been around high level entrepreneurs that are great at cutting content. And one thing that, that I've learned from, especially Keenan, bro, is, is everything is content. So mm -hmm. like literally we were at, we were at lunch one time and we were sitting there and somebody came up to him and they were like, bro, thank you so much. You helped me so much with my, with my store and making all this money. Keenan said, yo, hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Save that. Say, hold on, save that real quick. <laughs> yeah. He gave me his phone. He was like, bro, yo, record this. Yeah. Yo, bro, come back up to me and say uh -huh. that same thing again. I hit record. He said the same thing. It, literally everything is content. So start thinking from, from that lens. And once you do, for those of y'all that don't have content ideas, once you start just thinking everything is content, now that you're looking for that opportunity, it's going to now appear to you like, oh, that's a piece of content. Let me go ahead and cut it, right? Like if you're in the store and, and you, see, you see a particular brand that you like, cut a video on it and talk about how your, how your brand is similar to that brand but better because of X, Y, Z or whatever you want to do there. But it's very important. Guys, very important. do this. So we're going we're gonna to end it like that. We're about to go down. By the way, we're in Las Vegas right now at a mastermind um, networking with all types of business owners. Yep. So we're literally about to go downstairs and go to a VIP party. So remember, invest in yourself. Um, take this content that we're, that we're giving you guys and use it. Yep. Comment below, are you gonna use the controversy play or not, yeah. right? And if you are gonna use it, like, comment below, what kind of controversy is in your industry? What, what kind of things that can you leverage to start getting more traction into your business, more awareness? Because the more eyeballs that see your brand, the more money you can make. Absolutely. So let's go, all right? So with that being said, Mouthful of Marketing, episode two, we out. Peace. Peace.